Maliniara Jasurian says, I do lucid dream recently, and I'm kind of scared that I might be stuck there in my dream. So why do I feel that way? There's a few reasons for that, and in my opinion at least. And that is that firstly, you have kind of like um, a fake subjective description of what lucid dreaming is like. And this might be based on, let's say, experiences you've heard on Reddit or forums, pe things you've heard people say in the comments section of videos like uh, like these, or people like TikToks, for example. They're quite, uh, no offense, but they're quite sensationalist on TikTok. They tend to like hype things up just to get more attention and that's fine, right? But what happens is that when you describe lucid dreaming in a way that makes it sound either incredibly exciting and unbelievably easy to do, or incredibly difficult or dangerous to do, like let's say uh, people are worried they might get stuck in the lucid dream or they might have nightmares uh, or be, whatever it is, right? It kind of skews your perspective of it so that you end up it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you end up actually making it feel like you are stuck in a lucid dream, even though you're not really stuck. It's just your kind of, your subjective experience of it because you expect that you'll be stuck. It's, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but think of it like this. Let's say you've never heard about lucid dreaming before. And then the first time you hear about it, you read a comment saying like, hey, I just did this crazy thing called lucid dreaming uh, where I you know, become self-aware in my dreams and uh, it was great but then what happens is I actually got stuck in the dream and I was unable to escape and it felt like I was just kind of running and never really getting anywhere right let's say if that's the first thing you hear about lucid dreaming now what that's going to do is subconsciously you're going to think even if you're not aware of it you're going to be thinking subconsciously that when I have a lucid dream I'll get stuck in the dream and so when you have one even though you're not actually stuck right nothing's nothing's actually holding you there and like keeping you from moving subjectively to your uh, dreaming awareness it kind of feels like you're stuck and so all of that to say that you should watch very carefully the, the type of information you're consuming especially about lucid dreaming uh, but also about reality in general i mean i don't want to go into the whole um, you know why you should turn off the media and not listen to kind of uh, fear-mongering headlines and stuff like that but you've got to be careful the the information you consume about any topic will affect your subconscious beliefs at least a little bit so let's say if you read a headline or even just a comment saying like, I just had a really scary lucid dream. That has some kind of weight to it. That has some kind of power, uh, even just a little bit. That has some kind of power to actually influence what you actually experience in a lucid dream. Or it has the power to influence whether you have a lucid dream. And that's a whole other thing. Let's say if you're trying a lucid dream really hard, right? Every day you're trying to do it and you're, you become obsessed, let's say. And I've known a few people like this, they become obsessed with wanting to do it. So they're in forums every day, they're in comments, they're just trying everything they possibly can to actually have a lucid dream. And what happens is when, when they're in that state and then they read a comment from somebody saying like, hey, I've, just, I've been trying a lucid dream for six months, nothing's happened, I feel like giving up. That comment actually has power and it will influence their subconscious mind to believe that it's difficult. And so with these people, sometimes the easiest solution is just to stop trying, you know, stop trying to lucid dream, stop reading comments and content about lucid dreaming and watching videos about it and just let it happen. Just, you know, even if it just means taking a break for a couple of weeks and getting back into it in your own time, that's incredibly powerful when you consider the effect that a comment can have on your subconscious mind. So in a nutshell, yes, there's no reason to be scared of lucid dreaming. And you need, to, you need to bear in mind, especially that what you think will happen in a lucid dream is what will happen, usually, like 95% of the time, something crazy like that. So let's say if you have this idea that when I have a lucid dream, I'm gonna get stuck, that will probably happen, right? Whereas I, for example, have only been kind of stuck or like feel like I've been stuck in a dream one or two times in my life uh, because I know at, at a conscious and a subconscious level that it's not going to happen unless you think it's going to happen. And the same thing with flying. I've very rarely been in a flying dream and then fallen down. You know, al almost all of my flying dreams, flying lucid dreams, I'm in complete control. And the reason for that is that I've I discovered quite early on, you know, even as a kid when I first started lucid dreaming, uh, I kind of discovered that your belief will affect what you are able to do in the lucid dream. If you, and I'm specifically talking about your subconscious belief, if you subconsciously believe that when you fly, you'll fall down, <laughs> then it's gonna happen. That's just, that's gonna happen inevitably when you try and fly in a lucid dream. 
However, when you do, um, and I teach this in my Lucid Superpowers program actually, which you can find on howtolucid.com, uh, but when you do these kind of exercises to change your subconscious beliefs about things like the laws of physics, because you've got to understand that when you're in a lucid dream, the whole world and how it works, so like the physics of the world, the feel of the dream, the mechanics of it, whether you're able to fly or not, whether you can push your hand through a wall or not, these are all based on your schema, right? Your, your psychological blueprint of the world and how it's supposed to work, right? And these, these blueprints are really, really useful in waking life because they mean that our, our brains can kind of save bandwidth. Um, every time we walk into a room, we don't need to consciously think about what color are the walls or what's the texture on the ceiling like, you know, what's the dimensions and this kind of stuff. We don't need to think about that. So our, our brains kind of have this blueprint of what a room should be like. And we know that if we walk into a room, 99,000 times uh, out of 100,000, if we, or no, in fact, 100% of the time, when we walk on a floor, it's a solid surface. You're not gonna sink through the floor in the same way that when you walk into a room, you know subconsciously you're not gonna float up into the air, right? You have this blueprint of how things are supposed to work. And it's very useful for waking life. <laughs> it saves us a lot of time. But when it comes to a lucid dream, it can hold you back because you can walk into a room and not be able to fly, which of course in a lucid dream, you want to be able to fly, right? So in order to do crazy things in a lucid dream, right, specifically in a lucid dream, you need to change your subconscious beliefs about what you should be able to do. Um, and that's not easy, right? <laughs> that's not easy. That's why I created a program telling you how to do it because it's not easy. Um, and I didn't, I didn't find it easy. It took me a very long time to figure that stuff out. And I had, you know, one or two years basically of being lucid, but not being able to fully fly uh, every single time, not being able to be in complete or be in most complete control of the dream scene of manipulating the weather, the characters, dream portaling, that kind of stuff. So I hope that answers your question. You don't need to worry, you will not be stuck in a, uh, a lucid dream.